That's my tip for the show before I get started. Take a cruise. Anybody been on one? I took one for a vacation. Did anybody go? Uh, I want money on the boat. Did you win money on your boat? I want money. I want money on a slot machine. 200 bucks. Not a lot. I think it's the most you want to win, though. They have ones where you can win a million dollars in one shot. I didn't want to do it. I came up with a quarter. I went, nah. You know what I mean? It's too exciting. You do that. How can you ever take an orgasm seriously again? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> After that, like, you'll be in bed with the wife, and she's going, how was that, Richard? You're going, nah, it was all right. Didn't you like it? Nah, you know. It was like when I put in a quarter and got back a million bucks. Now that <laughs> was exciting. You have a problem on your hands there. <laughs> Gotta call up Dr. Ruth Westheimer for advice. You ever call her up? I call her up. I have to talk to her. I watch the show, no matter what kind of sexual mutant calls in on that phone, <laughs> it's okay with her. There is nothing too weird for this woman. You ever watch the show? People call her up. She's sitting there with those little Kermit legs on, and no matter what the guy says, it's okay. She goes, oh, I'm sad. And there's a guy going, yeah, uh, look, Doc, yeah. Uh, i tell you the reason I'm calling. Um, basically, I like to have sex with uh, goats that are on fire. Do you think there's anything unusual about that? <laughs> to hurt? No, absolutely not. Go right ahead. Can't believe you're even basting a quarter when you could be offered an attractive goat right now. <laughs> and the guy's going, yeah, well, some of my friends. The hell with your friends. What do they know? If you enjoy a flaming farm animal, go for it. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Leave it alone. Different goats for different folks. That's my motto. <laughs> Just get a big lighter and a six-pack and head for the barn singing, I feel pretty. And, you know, and I watch her, and I think I have to call her up because the main problem with the show is you look at her and you say, where did she get all of this sexual experience from? <laughs> look at her. If it was Joan Collins on the show, I'd call up. This is Dr. Ruth. <laughs> look at her. I mean, you know, now she's older. But I mean, even when she was younger, could you picture, I can't picture it, you know what I mean? I mean, she's a young girl. A bunch of guys standing in a bar, Dr. Ruth walks in, they're going, well, Bob, you know, I... Hey. <laughs> Who is that three-foot Jewish chick by the record? I <laughs> <laughs> mean, which one? One over there, under the bar stool. <laughs> She's got legs up to her knees. I'm gonna bend her over a shoebox, boy. <laughs> One hot tomato. <laughs> Stop covering your mouth. You can laugh. That's what you're here for. <laughs> you better not. You can laugh. It's okay. That's what I'm here for. It's the only fun I get to have all day is to watch a guy like you laugh. The rest of the time, I'm on the road doing absolutely nothing. There's nothing to do. People think it's glamorous. There is nothing to do. I sit in my room all day doing... You know what I do now, every night, to excite myself? Listen how stupid this is. I'm sitting on my bed, losing about two hours of sleep a night, because I'm trying to set my digital alarm clock for eight in the morning without using the slow button on the clock. Do you ever do this? <laughs> this is like a major thing in my life. I got a sweatband on, you know, I'm over there, you know, four, five, six, seven, eight, fifteen, too much. Okay, back up now. Let me try it again now. I'm talking about... <laughs> and you'll stay... <laughs> you'll stay there all night. I mean, 7.45, not enough. And there's a guy in the doorway. Why don't you use the slow button? That's for fags. Close the door, I know what I'm doing. I know what's happening. I got it here. I feel it this time. Four, five, six, seven, eight, double zero on the nose, baby. Yes! Yes! Yes. Hey, nothing else to do. I actually went to the video store. I rented all four Jaws movies in a row. If you ever had any doubt that you were wasting your life, spend the night doing that. <laughs> I took them home. I figured I'll kill a night having a shark fest with the Jaws movies. I'm in the hotel room. Jaws 1, pretty good. 2 and 3, eh. Jaws 4, you're sitting on the bed going, whoa, whoa, whoa. This shouldn't even be the title of this. The title should be, here's a fish, you're stupid. That should be the title <laughs> Am I right? You ever see this? The worst. You know, you ever see a movie so bad you can't even pretend you're not wasting your life watching it? The movie just like slaps you in the face with how bad it is. You know, you're sitting on your bed going, maybe this movie isn't that bad and I'm not wasting my life. And the movie goes, yes, you are. 
And you go, are you sure? And the movie taps me. You go, how do you know? How do we know? Look at you. It's 4.30 in the morning. You're sitting there with one sweat sock and some cold popcorn watching a movie about a shark that only kills one family out of an entire ocean full of perfectly edible people for no reason that we ever bother to explain. And we can't pry you off the bed with a spatula because you think it's bound to get better. That's right. <laughs> No matter how, no matter how stupid you are, you couldn't enjoy it, you know? You, you couldn't be stupid enough. I mean, forget stupid. If you had no brain at all, all right? Beyond, you're not stupid. You don't have a brain. You're on your bed. Don't have the brain. Here's you. A bucket of popcorn and a spinal cord. That's all. <laughs> Even your spinal cord, we get off the bed. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> hey, I'm not a brain or anything, but even I am getting a little pissed up. <laughs> Now uh, before, let me ask, did anybody see the movie so they know I'm not making this up? Any, you saw it? It's not, okay. All right, now the mother of the family has three people in her family killed by a shark in like a week. So a genius in her own right, she comes up with a plan, the mother, she says, well, shark is obviously after our family. <laughs> There's only one thing to do, we'll have to leave town. And you're sitting on your bed going, leave town. Isn't it a little severe? I mean, wouldn't an apartment building protect you from the average fish? I mean, I mean, by the time, you know, even if he's a really ambitious shark, you know what I mean? By the time he would get to the building, park in a spot, come up in the elevator, he would most likely smell fish and split. You know, while they're leaving the crowd. I mean, this is a fish we're talking about here, is it not? This is a fish. I mean, it's a movie. You'll believe things in a movie, but they have to tell you something, you know? You say, well, what's special about this fish that he can make plans to meet people in the middle of the ocean? And they go, well, you know, regular fish, just a fish. And you go, no, it's got to be a special fish. It's got to be, you know, robo fish or something. It can't be just a regular fish. It's a reg It can't be. I've caught fish. They're not that brilliant. I've caught them with a worm that doesn't even live in the ocean. You ever think about that? That sound like a brilliant animal? If you take a worm, listen to this, only lives in a garden in New Jersey, right? Put it on the bottom of the ocean, 200 feet down, on a hook that's going to rip his head in half. Fish doesn't think anything is wrong with this particular set of circumstances. She's a worm that doesn't live there on a hook that's going to rip his head in two, and his reaction, what a lucky break, breakfast right here on a rope. <laughs> trying to be superior. I'm not saying I'm a rocket genius myself, but that's basic. If I dive into a swimming pool, let's say, and there's, I don't know, a hot dog on the bottom, for example. I don't care how hungry I am. I'm gonna ask a question or two before I chow down in this situation. At least I wanna know why nobody else ate it. I'm gonna climb out, get some mustard and a bun, and jump back in. And if I do, I deserve to be on somebody's wall over the TV going, well, I screwed up. I screwed up. <laughs> hey, what are you doing on that wall? It's a long story. There's a hot dog in a pool. I don't want to. Dust me. I'm pretty embarrassed about the whole thing. Okay, so now, you saw the movie, okay? Now it's like five in the morning. I'm up. Birds are blowing by the window. Look at this moron. He's still awake. I'm in there, you know. There comes a point in the movie where if you don't turn it off now, you can never have any self-respect. You know, just turn it off. If you don't turn it off, at least after the movie is over, just, you know, get a vasectomy so there won't be other people like you in the world to perpetuate <laughs> this kind of thing. The mother of the family just really happens. Has like three people in her family killed by the shark. She's leaving. But does anybody know where she goes to get away from the shark? You remember? The Bahamas. Thank you very much. The Bahamas, ideal place to avoid a shark. Who would think? You know, of all places for a fish to be. And you're going, you know, why doesn't the mother just go to Canada? Wouldn't that make more sense? Because it's very rare you'll be on a dog sled and here behind you in pursuit. <laughs> well, hold on, let me see him. I was born by cesarean section myself. They said, hey, you want me? Come and get me. I'm not coming out. <laughs> I didn't want to come out. They were out there going, it's time to come out. And I was going, no, I'm happy. I got, you know, I'm in here. Food, drinks, I got the cord working. They go, it's time to come out. I said, no, I'm happy. 
Ooh. Come on. I said, no, then I get the police in there with megaphones going, we have your mother. Come out. Come out with your cord up and no one will get hurt. I said, no, I'm not coming out. Then he opened the top and I said, hey, I was just on my way out. I can't believe he did that. <laughs> and he go, hey, 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 hey. And they start beating the crap out of you. They turn you upside down, slap your bottom, take your fingerprints, and just to cap off the festivities, <laughs> circumcise you. <laughs> Happy birthday, baby. You ever think about that? <laughs> you ever trust anybody again? You've been on Earth five minutes. You're beaten, booked, and filleted. Is that a nice thing to do? <laughs> it's this big. This big. You know, you're on crutches going, holy. I wonder what they have planned for the rest of the week if that was the first day. <laughs> There's another baby over there. I'll talk to him. Hey, kid, wake up. This happened to you? What? I got a bracelet worth five cents. They got half my... Is that the deal? <laughs> kind of a trade is that? Anybody shows up with a necklace, I'm getting the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Your parents take you home and put you in a cage. <laughs> Throw you in that crib with giant horror movie animals all night. <laughs> and you're in your bed. Ah! Your parents come running and, oh, what's the matter? Maybe he's hungry, hungry, thirsty. Hungry, thirsty, I'm scared. Get me out of here. <laughs> but son, they're only stuffed animals. Put them in your damn room. What's wrong with you people? Go to the potty, son. You go to the potty. Give me strained prunes and then you scared the hell out of me. You want me to control myself? Get the hell out. <laughs> hate my life. Everybody that comes in that door feels comfortable to blow a disgusting spit noise on my stomach. Why, oh, these people, I don't know them. <laughs> Everybody that walks in this house, is that the child? Hand me him. <laughs> Hey, mister, I got a hand. Shake him. <laughs> See anybody blowing on your stomach, Mom? See the cable guy coming over here. Hi, I'm the cable guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any kids. So I shouldn't talk. I don't want to talk. Maybe that's what you have to do. I wouldn't have a kid. If I had a kid, I'd like to be a girl. Because if it's the boy, you're the father, you're going to have the information. You know what I mean? He's going to come to you with hard questions. Kids ask things. You know, they want to know. Why is the sky blue? You don't know that. Why is the sea green? You don't know that. Why, Dad, when I wake up in the morning, do I have this stiff thing in my pajamas? You don't know that either. He's going to make up an excuse. You know, going, uh, yeah, the stiff thing. Uh, reason for that, son. Uh, I don't know what that is. It's, uh, it's, the, it's uh, the uh, boner fairy that causes that, son. You see? <laughs> Every night, the uh, boner fairy slips in through the window and sprinkles that little fellow with some dust, and he pops up to breathe. Uh, Oh, here's the wife, uh, Louise. I was just explaining to Timmy here about the uh, boner fairy. Dear. <laughs> Tell him it's the boner fairy, would you? And there's the wife going, yes, Timmy, it's the boner fairy, yeah. See the boner fairy, would you send him off to daddy's room if possible? <laughs> <laughs> he hasn't seen the boner fairy in quite some time. <laughs> Doesn't daddy see the boner fairy? No, no, we've left the window open, no luck with the boner fairy. <laughs> Thank you very much. You've been a great crowd.